Is our consciousness secretly a quantum computer? After all, we still manage to outperform supercomputers in many tasks. How can our small brains compete with massive rooms of computers? Well, one thought is that our brains take advantage of quantum speed up, and we are in fact a mini walking and talking quantum computer. And recent research claims to confirm this hypothesis. But what does this even mean? And do we really have evidence that we are quantum computers? Let's discuss it. Before we get into the measurements of quantum entanglement in the brain, why would this even be a good thing? Our brains are problem solving masters. They are outstanding at image recognition and are very efficient at forgetting useless information to make way for new information. Although we probably all wish that we had a better memory. Well, many of these processes can be described as optimization problems. For some given input, we need to fire the right neurons to get the correct output. On the other side, if you ask the right people, quantum computers will solve every problem. But in reality, they are promising to solve optimization problems. They take some complex problem that can be mapped onto a quantum system such that all the bad solutions will interfere and that only correct answers will be measurable. In this way, we don't need to test every possible answer. The quantum system automatically removes them all. You can think about this as a maze. A normal computer has to test to find the correct one. It may get lucky and find the correct path early on, but it might also be the last possible path that it tries, meaning that the computer would have explored the entire maze. A quantum computer also explores the entire maze, but simultaneously rather than one at a time. The amazing thing is that the incorrect paths destructively interfere with each other, effectively giving a zero, letting us know that these paths aren't valid, while the correct path constructively interferes, letting us know that this is a valid path. And because this is all simultaneous, the processing is much faster than when traditional computers. So if our brains actually did use quantum entanglement, it could help to explain why we're so smart. Rather than us trying to find the right answer slowly, we would just find the correct answer in a fraction of the time. So how have scientists detected quantum entanglement in human brains? Well, recent work in the search for quantum gravity has developed a neat trick for detecting quantum interactions in hard to measure systems. You take a system that you know and can control, and then you let it interact with an unknown system. If this unknown system has some quantum entanglement, then there are telltale signs in the control system. So to tell if a brain is using quantum entanglement, we need a known system. And in this case, the scientists use nuclear spins in brain water. Our brain has plenty of water in it, and measuring nuclear spins in brain water is nothing new. Magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, does this all the time. MRIs apply a large magnetic field, which causes nuclear spins to rotate, where larger magnetic fields cause the spins to rotate faster. As nuclear spins are tiny little magnets, this is the same as having a rotating magnet, and rotating magnets produce an electromagnetic field. Inside MRIs, there are little antennas that can pick up this signal from these rotating spins. As we know the type of nuclei these spins are, we can image them by applying the right magnetic field to match the antenna's sensing frequency. Then by applying magnetic gradients, it is possible to image slices of your brain, where a small region has the right magnetic field to rotate the spins at the sensing frequency of the antennas. In the end, MRI images just measure the density of these nuclear spins inside of you. Well, what these scientists did was to use the nuclear spins to image the brain, but to put these nuclear spins in a quantum entangled state that can now interact with the rest of the brain. To do this, they need to use a special MRI that is specifically built to measure entanglement. The important thing is that they detected entanglement. And even more interestingly, that they found that the entanglement was modulated by the person's heartbeat. They saw bursts in the entanglement that correlated with the person's heartbeat. 
Now generally, you can't see heartbeats in MRI. The electrochemical signals are just too small to be detected. As such, this suggests that the heartbeat itself has something to do with the quantum entanglement of atoms in the brain. Now, this is rather puzzling. Why would your heartbeat lead to a quantum entanglement in your brain? Well, we don't know. All we can say is that this is what was observed for the moment. But it wasn't all that was observed. And we still have a burning question. Does this entanglement have anything to do with our conscious mind? Well, one of the scientists involved in this work said, if entanglement is the only possible explanation here, then it would mean that brain processes must have interacted with nuclear spins, mediating the entanglement between the nuclear spins. As a result, we can deduce that those brain functions must be quantum. The conclusion that our brain functions may be quantum was made much stronger by the next results. The scientists found that the entanglement depended on how aware the participants were. They found that seven participants had fallen asleep during the measurements. If you've been in an MRI for a long time, then you know that this isn't too shocking. Well, during the time that they were asleep, the entanglement signal decreased. In fact, they could even see the time it took for people to wake up in the entanglement signal itself, which in this case was around 20 minutes. This means that not only do we have some entanglement in our brains, but we have more of it when we're using our brains. This correlation does suggest that quantum entanglement plays some role in our consciousness. But these are initial results. And while they indicate that we have some quantum entanglement inside of our brains, it is just one piece of research. And even if we do have entanglement in our brains, it doesn't mean that we use this entanglement. It is one thing to have entanglement. It is another to actually use it. These results need to be confirmed by other groups. And if the results are true, then we need to identify if the entanglement is actually used. Maybe we are secretly quantum computers, or maybe we have a little entanglement that is completely useless. Only time will tell. If you are interested in quantum computing, check out this video about a recent breakthrough in something called analog quantum computing. Thanks for watching, have fun, and see you next time.